Okay, the recording is started. Let's just take a mo moment to pray, and then we will proceed with our class. I'd like to invite somebody to please pray with us together as a class, and then we will get started. Anyone can pray, please. I'll pray. Let me pray. Go ahead. Glory to you, Lord Jesus, for, for this day. Lord, as we are going to learn your living word, Lord, uh, let your spirit uh, empower us, Lord, and give us fresh revelation as we keep pressing towards the finish line, Lord. So, Lord, let us all experience the goodness of you as we sink to your powerful word, Lord, even today. So, Lord, I pray and ask that, Lord, Father, give us your heart to understand better, Lord, Father. And I pray for all the students and pastor. Okay, I think um, Aaron's line must have dropped. All right. Uh, Father, we thank you. You bless this time together in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I think uh, while Erin was praying, her line may have dropped. So uh, I'm sure Erin will connect back. Uh, welcome, everyone, to the class. So this week in this course, uh, welcome back, Erin. Uh, we finished your prayer, and uh, we said amen. OK. So uh, yeah, not a problem, not a problem. All right. So this week uh, in our course on uh, church and ministry administration, we are talking about a very important area, uh, which is uh, human resource management, which is you know, learning how to uh, manage uh, people. And uh, we are focused mainly on church staff. Uh, next week, uh, I mean, after this class, hopefully we'll finish everything today. The next week we will look at another side, which is volunteer management. That is, uh, which is again an important part of uh, a church or a Christian ministry, because um, a lot of people uh, who serve would be serving, uh, a good number of people serve as volunteers. How do we work with them and so on? Okay, so let me go back to the notes for this uh, lecture. So I will quickly review and uh, move forward. Right, so in talking about church staff, human resource management, uh, we said, you know, we have staff, we have consultants, we have volunteers. So uh, volunteer management, we will talk about it in the next chapter, next class. Uh, we are mainly dealing with staff and uh, most of what we see on staff will also apply to consultants, but uh, consultants, you know, work a little differently. They, pay, they are paid hourly and uh, they, uh, and some may just do it on a work basis. Things that they finish, we pay them, right? So taking care of our own staff is important. And I think uh, some other things we've, we are sharing here are, 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 are important for Christian organizations, churches, and it will be useful, you know, to, for, for people to uh, make, you know, in, include them in the way they run the church or the ministry. Um, quickly to review, uh, we talked about the hiring process. How do you write, hire the right people? And that's very important because you need the right people in the right places uh, to, you know, for the organization to be able to do um, uh, what 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 they're working, what we're working towards, right? So we talked about having role descriptions, clearly defining what you need uh, as part of what the person fulfilling that role should be able to do. Uh, we talked about having an interview process. That means a formal way of bringing somebody into uh, the organization. Uh, like we said, uh, sometimes what happens is, you know, people, uh, a pastor may say, tell somebody, hey, just come and start working or come and join. So there's no formal interview process. And then later on, it you know, things go bad. It affects relationships. And also, in order to avoid that, if you do a formal process it makes sure that you're putting the right people in the right place um you know and i was just sharing some things on how you do the interview just just some practical things uh basically to ask different questions to um you know to find out you know uh, certain areas 
uh, of the person that you're interviewing, uh, some other red flags and so on, right? And then uh, we said that, yeah, so uh, sometimes you may do reference checks. You know, you, you call the, especially if there are people you don't know, then you would call uh, the references that they've given, maybe their pastor or uh, uh, their previous employer, just to ask, you know, how, the, how they did. Um, then once that is done, you need to put everything down as a formal offer letter. And I, we've given you samples for many of these things. Also give them guide the staff guidelines so that they know, you know, what is expected and uh, employee orientation, getting them ready to start work, right? So let's go into the other parts of uh, 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 um, managing employees. Uh, we started talking about employee compensation. We, we went through some of these statements here, why it is important to pay people well, uh, because then they can focus on their work and not be concerned about their uh, uh, finances and their uh, a money situation. Otherwise, uh, if people are very concerned about their money situation, then they really cannot do a good job uh, uh, at their work, right? But how do you determine that? How, on what basis do you determine the pay? Of course, there are a lot of factors that go into it. Uh, of course, it depends on what the organization can afford. So uh, as, as the organization has the capacity to pay, then you're able to give people a little bit more. Uh, and then, but then you also look at all of these other things like the skills, the responsibilities, the leadership, the performance, are they personally growing and their commitment to the organization, the experience that they bring. All these things are uh, factors that you take into account when you decide on the salary of a, of a person, right? But ultimately you want to be fair, right? So you want to be fair uh, to everybody in the organization. So all everybody in the organization is uh, looked upon uh, through the same criteria that we have listed here. And based on that, you determine the pay. Some of the other things that uh, we do as a church and which, uh, you know, as a Christian ministry, you can consider doing is giving some other benefits to the employees. Uh, one thing that we do is we provide health insurance. Um, now, when you you know when you buy health insurance as a group, uh, that means all the staff and their families are covered, uh, family members are covered. Uh, so uh, you know it's a benefit you can provide for the staff and their families. Uh, another thing that we do is also uh, here we call it as a uh, employee provident fund. That means. Again, this is determined by the government. They say that you know uh, the government decides how much you can uh, each employee contributes and how much the organization contributes towards the employee's uh, provident fund or what we call as a retirement savings. It's for their future after they cross 60, uh, they can take that money out. Generally, uh, sometimes they can take uh, they can take it out earlier if they if they want it for other you know, emergency reasons or whatever. But uh, so you can contribute towards those retirement savings. Uh, you can provide leaves paid, uh, paid time off, which we call as vacation, or uh, there's also sick leave and there is uh, emergency leave. So we have paid times off. So we have about 11 days, which are, uh, which are uh, public holidays. Um, and then we have, uh, uh, for a new person who's joining, for less than two years, we give uh, three weeks paid off. And after two years, we give four weeks paid off. Uh, and then uh, we also have uh, five days of sick leave and five days of emergency leave, something like that. You know, So we, we have said, okay, you know, so uh, these are all the days in the course of a calendar year, uh, you get these, day, which is a benefit so that they can, you know, refresh themselves or attend to personal things. Um, provide opportunities for learning and development. We'll talk about some of those things. And also uh, a bonus. And of course, uh, a bonus also depends on how the organization is doing. If the organization has money, then uh, at the end of the year or whatever, whenever the organization decides once a year to give an extra uh, amount to the, uh, to the staff, the employees. So, uh, 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 
these are just benefits. These are things that make people feel happy uh, that you know they are working. The organization organization is doing something to take care of them. And of course, all of these are equally available to every staff. So all everybody receives. Every staff receives that. Now, of course, uh, when you're working for a Christian organization like a church or a, a Christian ministry, there are also some intangible benefits that can be of given right uh, one uh, is uh, involvement uh, the benefit is uh, your, your involvement in kingdom work so that gives a lot of meaning uh, to uh, the staff and it's like I, i'm actually doing something that is serving the cause of god's kingdom so that's a very powerful benefit uh, we also give opportunity for missions so uh, i mean the last two years we have not had missions but before that um, missions that means uh, traveling and ministering outside uh, around our country so every every staff uh, can take uh, will uh, can take one can do one fully paid missions trip that means the church will pay for their travel to be part of the missions one once a year so they can choose uh, you know the, the missions coordinator will plan out those missions and then they can choose to be part of the missions. But, but of course, they have to contribute meaning, meaningfully on the missions trip. That means they have to do something you know, uh, as part of the missions. And then they go. So we give them, give opportunity. If they want to go on more, they can use their uh, <clears throat> vacation leaves or some you know, ministry leaves uh, and go on mission trips. Um, there's also the, you know, uh, this this whole thing about job security of course this is dependent on performance uh, you know if a person is doing well you know uh, if and the, and the organization is doing well uh, then you have a secure job that means no nobody's going to take the job away from you uh, because uh, you're doing well and the organization is doing well uh, uh, other other benefit is uh, growth opportunity that means you can grow you can grow professionally you can grow in your role uh, you can grow in uh, in uh, in the different opportunities, the kinds of work that is being done. So the, the different ways of different opportunities for growth. Uh, also, we provide, uh, you know, as an organization, you, you can provide a good workplace culture. Uh, we will talk about culture in a different uh, chapter. You know, so that the work culture is something that uh, that uh, makes you know makes it fun. It makes it enjoyable to be part of the organization, and we'll talk about how to you know, to find that culture, how to create that culture and so on. So workplace culture is also a very important intangible benefit. People enjoy that. Okay, I can work here, work with good people, et cetera. Uh, some other thing uh, would also be the brand. So if you're working for an organization that has a good name, uh, so example, either a church or a Christian ministry that is well recognized in the Christian community then you have a brand and it's it's nice to say i'm working for such and such an organization uh, and people you know immediately respect that and they appreciate that so there's a brand recognition so to speak and then there is also the quality of life which means uh, hopefully um, uh, you know uh, uh, people have time to do things outside of work uh, uh, with respect to their personal interests or their family, uh, travel, whatever they may be interested in. So uh, these are intangible benefits. You know, the work doesn't consume the whole life, but uh, the work is there, but they have plenty of time for, you know, the things that they enjoy doing. So these are other in, uh, benefits that, uh, that uh, you know, a Christian organization can provide. Uh, for its people and we have to constantly look at these things so that make sure that you know these things are actually happening uh, so uh, I will just quickly go through this and then you know uh, go through these various as aspects of uh, human resource management then we'll have time for some discussion towards the end uh, now let's talk about employee management that means it's one thing to you know have <clears throat> have a team of people working together in the organization uh, but uh, you know how do we keep them motivated how do we take care of them uh, how do we uh, you know uh, uh, make sure that everybody enjoys the work that's important uh, and uh, you know to treat people well and etc so some thoughts along those lines i think somebody's trying to come in let me just check uh daryl okay daryl's coming 
Okay, Neelam. Uh, all right, can you uh, let them know? Uh, um, Neelam can join, Aaron is joined. Okay. Yeah, usually when I shift, okay, Neelam, Neelam is coming. Usually when I shift to a PDF, uh, uh, this auto admit doesn't work, so people get stuck outside the class. All right, I'm going back to the PDF now. All right, so we're talking about employee management here. How do we, you know, what are some things we can do to keep people excited about their work, uh, that they can give their best, they can be creative, they can be passionate, uh, they can do extra things whenever it's needed, so on. Right. So here are some things. I'm not saying this is a complete list, but these are some common, gender, commonly understood things behind employee motivation, staff motivation. Right. First of all, you need to provide meaningful work. The work should they should see meaning in their work. Uh, it shouldn't be just, uh, you know, a, 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 a boring thing that is a meaningless thing. Yeah. So, meaningful work. Uh, they have room to make choices, make decisions. So then that's uh, you're empowering them in their sphere, in their role, within their role. Uh, they're making their decisions, choices. That's also uh, very good. Uh, uh, we have work that is matching their competencies, right? So what they're good at, you need to put them there. And if you put somebody in a role where they don't have the skills, then it can be very frustrating for them. Uh, it can be sometimes overwhelming for them. Uh, and, uh, you know, so it can be very discouraging. So, you know, you provide work that matches their competencies. Um, you also provide work that stretches them, you know, so it makes them learn new things. It makes them develop new skills or gives them new challenges in their area. So that's always a good motivator <clears throat> for people. It's, yeah, I am growing, I'm learning something new, uh, or I'm doing, I'm taking up a new challenge, things like that. Another motivator is to highlight progress. Say, hey, uh, you, you've made progress. You've, you've, you know, you've uh, done, done, uh, you know, what what you couldn't do last year. You're doing now, and this wonderful, and you highlight it within the team, or you appreciate people within the team uh, for the progress they've made. Uh, on on a larger scale, you can think of uh, engaging people in decision making. So. You know, again, this can be done at the team level or it can be done as a, as a group level. Now at APC, uh, our staff, like I said, we're still a small group. We only have about uh, 25 people. So it's easy, you know, when we call for a staff meeting, everybody can participate. Uh, everybody can be involved in, uh, you know, general decision making. Uh, and also in smaller teams, so, you know, when in, in their own teams, whatever they are doing, they can be involved in making those decisions. So that, that also encourages people, empowers people, uh, providing positive reinforcement. When somebody does a good job, you you know tell them, hey, nice, nice job, or you just appreciate them, uh, thank them. That, that keeps people motivated. Uh, so you're giving them reinforcement. And if you also appreciate people visibly, uh, you know, uh, that also, is a good thing. Like you send an email to everybody saying, hey, this was done, or this team did this, or uh, that team, you know, was did this project, whatever. You know, so there's a visible appreciation uh, within the organization for the contributions by teams or by individuals. Um, and that keeps people motivated. Uh, ability to trust the team. Now, of course, when the team develops the competencies that they need and they're doing good work, you can just let them go and you know keep let them do their work. So when, when they feel trusted, that also is very empowering. Uh, you can coach with feedback. Uh, so uh, you know we will provide feedback, we and uh, help them work on things and develop things. And so that, that coaching part also motivates people uh, and helps them give out their best and then providing inspirational leadership. So, and they see uh, their own leaders doing stuff that is bigger and uh, bigger than them. Then they say, wow, we can also do it. And it inspires them. So these are some of the common things that is, uh, you know, that, that goes to motivating people. And uh, we need to, think about these things within our organizations so that 
you know, we can we can intentionally do these things. You know, so for instance, um, uh, in the in uh, for our pastors, you know, uh, 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 and I'm going back a few years when some of our pastors were new, uh, starting out. I would give feedback about their sermons. Now, of course, it was between me and them, so nobody else would know. But uh, uh, it's okay, you preach today, and then I'll sit and listen. Then I'll give feedback. It's, you know, this was this can be done better, that can be done better. So there was like, you know, uh, a personal coaching happening, feedback being given. And uh, of course, now mo- most of them are all mature already. So uh, 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 if and when I do give feedback, it will be, you know, on just on the finer details, but most of them by now are mature in their uh, uh, ministry uh, uh, in what they do. But in the early days, there was a lot of, you know, feedback being given and uh, that helped them grow, you know, develop. Uh, today, uh, there's another baby we are coaching the team, the, the pastoral team um, is, you know, we do these mentoring hours on Thursdays uh, with all the Bible, co- with the Bible college students. So it's just an open time and people come and ask questions. So that is actually a coaching time even for the pastors, uh, big, uh, our faculty, because, you know, you have to answer questions impromptu. That means you don't have time to prepare. Somebody, some students are asking questions, you have to answer. So initially, uh, I was handling most of it. And then slowly I said, okay, you know, uh, getting others, you know, you do it, you do it. And then sometimes I have to give feedback after the session. Uh, you know, uh, saying, okay, here, here's the uh, additional information that could be shared on that question and so on. So what's happening is we're constantly uh, helping them develop uh, in their pastoral role, in their ministry role. And, you know, uh, at some point they will be uh, very good in what they're doing. Right? But these are different ways you can motivate, uh, motivate people uh, who mm-hmm. are staff for working so on. Uh, at the same time, we have to address demotivators, you know, what uh, negatively affects people, right? Here are again, a few common things. One is uh, employee turnover. So if, um, if in an organization, people are constantly leaving the organization, employees are leaving, uh, it can have a negative impact on other people. Now, uh, as a church organization, uh, one of the things is uh, uh, for us, uh, of course, there are people who leave for various reasons, you know, and, and one of the reasons is uh, uh, that they would want to go and pursue their own ministry. So over the years, we've had a lot of people who worked with us. At some point, they would say, okay, I want to go and start my ministry. I want to go and start a church somewhere or, you know, and we never, we never uh, stopped them. Uh, we encouraged them. So, uh, so from that perspective, we do have at least every year, maybe one person will leave. Uh, they want to go and start something uh, and we don't stop it. You know, we don't prevent them from stepping out and going. Uh, of course, we recognize that every time somebody leaves the organization, it does have a kind of a demotivating effect on the rest. Because they'll be like, oh, you know, somebody's gone, uh, somebody's left, why did they leave? Why couldn't they stay? But then we also have to look from a perspective that they are pursuing something they want to pursue and uh, we shouldn't stop it. So uh, we we just release them, bless them and let them go. Uh, and sometimes we may even help them start uh, their ministry, uh, you know, wherever they're going. So. Uh, but keep in mind that uh, people leaving an organization does have uh, some sort of a demotivating effect on the organization itself. Um, uh, uh, then, of course, there is workplace culture. You know, if the culture is very uh, toxic, if it's very too much pressure, too much uh, workload, 
Uh, I've already mentioned that here, but if the culture, the work environment is not good, it can be very demotivating for people. Uh, part of it has to do with relationships. Part of it do, has to do with how people work. So we have, we have we will be doing uh, we'll be having a full chapter on workplace culture, um, organizational culture. But that is very important uh, to make sure you have a healthy workplace culture. We'll talk about that in detail. Sometimes reorganization can be a demotivator if you move people. Um, you know, across, and sometimes we may need to do it. We, we have done it. Uh, we need to reorganize. We have to move people from, you know, different roles and all that. That could have a demotivating effect. Uh, and so that has to be managed well. But sometimes it is very necessary uh, if uh, there, there is a need to rearrange, you know, uh, or redesign our systems and processes. Uh, too much workload can be demotivating. Sometimes personal challenges that they are going through can impact their work and that has to be dealt with separately, right? Uh, I'll quickly run through a few other things that we do all in the uh, under employee management, some things we can do. Um, uh, one is uh, making sure that people enjoy the work, right? So yeah, most of the time this is done informally. That means as you're talking to people, hey, are you enjoying your work? How's it going? Uh, so you're, you're, you're in an informal way, you're gauging if they like their work. You know, what, what can we do? Uh, you know, what, what, what would you like to do? What are your interests? So that's a very informal way, but it's a very important way. The, usually the informal way is much better than the formal way because um, in a formal uh, questionnaire, uh, people usually don't have the opportunity to say what they want to say. Uh, but in an informal conversation, hey, how are you doing? Uh, how's work? Or, you know, what, you know, so they will say, and I want to do this. I, I, I'm thinking about it and so on. So, uh, you know, they're just keeping a pulse on how people happy in the organization is important. It gives you ideas on how you can make things better for them you know, while they work. Um, the other thing we do is uh, we tell people, you know, what we tell is we tell people to do their own evaluation and plan for the next year, uh, set their own goals. And then we review that once a year. Usually this happens in November, December of the year. Now, uh, uh, of course, the plan from 2019, 2020, you know, those two years now have been disrupted because of the pandemic. So uh, we, we are not holding people to whatever they had put down in the document uh, because a lot of factors affected what could be done. But otherwise what happens is uh, we tell people uh, in November, December to plan for the next year in their areas of ministry. Uh, they review the previous year, they plan for the next year and I've given the sample document. Yeah, they, they themselves write down, okay, this is what I'm planning to do. And uh, then uh, we have a meeting, we can update or revise the plan. And then the following year, when the year is happening, uh, we just, you know, on a, on, a, on a monthly basis or on an informal basis, we keep track of what is happening. Uh, for me with the pastors, I would meet with the pastors once a month just to review what's happening and then Again, we have a six month review and then a review in December. That's at a pastor's level. For most of the staff, it'll be just a review at the end of the year while their team, immediate team leaders are reviewing you know, on a monthly basis. But the point is uh, they are able to plan, uh, they are able to review, and then based on that, the planning, you know, uh, at the end of the year, we can decide their bonus, we can decide their uh, increment for the following year and so on. You know, so this is something that happens. Uh, regular review meetings happen, maybe it could be informal. How are things going? Have, has this been done? How are prog things progress? Or I, before the pandemic, I used to meet with our pastors every, each one, each pastor once on, one on one for one hour every month. Uh, but I will review with the pastor, uh, the associate pastors, uh, what is going on in the areas of ministry and also with the ministry leaders, what is happening with their ministry and so on. So we used to do it in a, in a regular monthly review meeting. Uh, but, you know, the last two years that we've kind of let that go simply because, uh, you know, 
we don't have the opportunity to do the things that we would normally do. So uh, we have not been doing it now. Uh, we'll resume it once things get back to normal. Okay. Now, so another part of uh, 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 you know just working with people, employee management is hand handling underperforming employees. So uh, this is this is a challenge uh, simply because in a Christian organization, you know people obviously want to be they expect okay you have grace you have to give me grace and uh you know that they expect that you have to be loving you have to be kind you have to be gentle uh, all of that which is fine which is true but at the same time you know um if people are not performing then you have to address it because uh, it it will be affecting other things that are happening in the organization so uh, as, a, as a as 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 a you know whatever leadership capacity you you are in in the organization, this is a very difficult task of having to sit down with somebody and tell them, look, you know uh, your your job is not up to the your work is not up to the mark. It's a very difficult thing, but you know you have to do it. You have to give feedback, and usually uh, we take uh, we take the three strike approach. That means first time things are not going well, you sit down, you give them a, you, you discuss things with them uh, and you say, look, things have to improve. Then you do it a second time. If things don't improve third time, you close the case. That means you have to relieve, relieve them, right? So it's a three strike approach. You've given them two warnings. If it doesn't change, then you have to release them. Now, sometimes what we do is we try to reassign them. So you take them from one role, maybe they don't have the skills in that role, uh, maybe they don't have the aptitude. And so you try to reassign them, put them in a different role, see how it goes there. Uh, if that doesn't happen, you know, if there is some, you know, if there's another role for which they're suited, you can try to re reassign them, but then uh, you can only do it two or three times. After that, if they're not performing, you know, you've given them two or three chances <clears throat> and they're not performing then, you just have to, uh, you know, make a decision. Maybe you have to release them, or move them to some sort of a uh, hourly type of role where they only do the things that they can do and leave it at that. You know, so uh, uh, that that handling you know underperforming employees is a challenging thing, but that needs to be done. Uh, in th in the light of that, what I, I recommend is always do do it in face-to-face -face meetings you know, to address difficult matters. This was a mistake I used to make in the early days. I remember in the early days, uh, you know, I, 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 I made tough decisions, but I communicated it through email. Uh, that was a very bad thing. Uh, and, and maybe I had my reasons for doing it. I was very busy and, uh, you know, especially in some situations, the person who was working was working remotely. They were working from, you know, south of Bangalore, and uh, our office was another another part of the city. I didn't want to make them come all the way across town just for me to tell them that hey, uh, things are not working out, and we need to uh, we need to stop your consulting engagement with the church. Uh, so I just sent it by email. But the fact that I sent it by email upset them even more. You know, they say, why didn't you speak to me? So those were mistakes I made personally in the early days of the organization. But then I learned, you know, I learned, okay, difficult matters, always sit down face to face and talk, uh, explain it to them. So then there can be a dialogue, they can ask questions, you can explain it and uh, uh, don't do it by email. Uh, have a conversation talk to them, uh, you know, tell them you've looked at the whole picture, you've, you know, you've gone through so many months, everything. But after you have the conversation, then you put it in writing. So this is another thing I learned, very important. Always put these things in writing because they may forget, you may forget what you said. Uh, they may not understand, you know, the reason why you made your decision. So when it's in writing, they can read it two or three times and realize that, look, 
uh, you know, you have been patient, you have been gracious, you've given them a lot of time to improve, uh, you know, all those kinds of things. Plus, this is a written record of that decision, you know. So this whole issue of um, handling underperforming employees is a challenging thing, but, there, you know, you can do it well. And if you do it well, then, okay, everybody is at peace and uh, things will still work out fine, even though the process is difficult. Okay, so right, that's just a quick run through on you know managing church staff, managing employees. Uh, I'll try to finish uh, the rest, and then we'll have time for questions. Uh, another important thing is trying you know how giving opportunities for people in the organization to keep developing, right? Uh, that means uh, they should keep getting better, and if they get better, of, of course the organization also benefits. So we need to have some ways in which we can help people get better. So some of the things that we do uh, uh, is of course, one is on the job training. So we let pe give people the time they need to learn, to do research, to read, you know, whatever related to their role and their work. There's this co you know, constant on the job training where people are doing all the IT team, others in the media, so they, we, we encourage, okay, you learn, you develop this skill, uh, try this out, okay, experiment with that, so on. So on the job training happening. Then uh, we do encourage people, okay, and nowadays, you know, uh, there's no, there's not too much need to go to formal courses because a lot of these courses are on, available online. Uh, we encourage people to do online courses, learn things. The other things that we also provide is um, we let our staff attend Bible college courses. Uh, so every staff is entitled to attend, uh, I think, uh, I think two courses every semester or something like that. Um, so that, you know, it's part of the, it's counted as part of their work. So they, you know, so four hours a week, I think uh, they can use to, you know, attend courses. Uh, we also encourage them to attend weekend schools. Uh, it's not happening now, but uh, uh, under normal conditions, weekend schools used to happen. So we used to encourage our staff, you can attend these courses, uh, weekend school. It's counted as a day of work. Uh, so that um, they, if they sit, through, they attend the whole school. I mean, that Saturday, it's part of their, it's considered a work day. So it's just an incentive for them to, you know, develop spiritually. Um, and the other things uh, is also when there are new projects or new opportunities, uh, new roles. Uh, these are things that we can provide to help people grow within the organization. Something to keep in mind. So basically you're caring for the individual, you know, uh, and as you care for the individual, the organization benefits. All right, let me, uh, let's uh, wrap up with a few things and we'll have some time for discussion. Uh, so, Performance reviews are, usually, are done once a year. So once a year, you sit with the staff uh, or the immediate manager will review their work and will recommend that, yeah, they've done a good work so we can, and they've developed uh, themselves this year so we can increase their salary or uh, their contribution has been very good or uh, this is what we planned for their next step uh, in, their, uh, in their work and so on. So that happens once a year. For all our staff, and then um, there will be difficult situations, uh, as I mentioned, uh, and sadly there will be situations that result in immediate termination. Now, for underperforming employees, like we mentioned earlier, you know we do this three strikes approach, uh, but uh, there are situations that result in immediate termination. So. Uh, this has to do more with uh, uh, issues of integrity, uh, issues of, uh, you know, uh, behavior. You know? So uh, if there is uh, a situation where there is uh, uh, a, a, a lack of uh, integrity, so, you know, in one situation had to do with uh, finances, so uh, there was a mishandling of finances uh, in such a situation, immediate termination, you know, so uh, it's the end of it. That's it. There's no, no more, no discussion, no questions, no warnings. 
nothing. It's this is your last uh, day at the at the organization. So we have had to do that. Uh, uh, in in one situation, it had to do with the inappropriate conduct. Uh, there were two married people getting into a relationship, and this happened in the church office. So the first time I saw it, I had a suspicion. I just took the man aside. I said, hey, uh, this is not right. And uh, uh, please be careful. But then within like a week or two, I got a call from the wife saying this is happening. So, so basically, there was a married man, there was a married lady working in the church office. So the wife of the married man called me, said, hey, some, this, is, he's, you know, this is happening. So that same week, I called both of them. I called the wife, I called the lady, I called all of them to church office on Saturday. Verified everything, made sure, yeah, this thing's going on. And at that moment, both were terminated. So this is a very difficult situation and there is no grace because like this, no, nothing, something like this uh, is not allowed to happen. So these are difficult situations when it is, has to do with uh, uh, you know, uh, integrity, inappropriate behavior. Uh, now in a corporate, let's say, you know, if, if there's an affair going on, that's, that's their problem. But in a church setting, it's very different. And uh, it is, you know, we've also put it down in our staff guidelines. So before they join the organization, they know these are things that, uh, you know, are not going to be tolerated. And, uh, and uh, if there is uh, any kind of, you know, this kind of behavior. And sadly, at APC, we've had to do some of these things. It is sad, but you have to be firm because you're protecting the organization when you make such kinds of decisions. So there was uh, immediate termination in these cases. Uh, no, no, no grace. Um, now, generally, uh, I'm just going to finish up here. Uh, generally, uh, 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 when an employee or person leaves, you want to have a conversation. Uh, 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 so a, a formal way of trying to find out why they are leaving is good. Now, if you are terminating them, you're dismissing them, then obviously the reasons the, uh, the reasons are obvious. Uh, uh, but then if somebody's choosing to leave, then it's good to have conversation. Now, uh, so we've done it in the past, but of course, you know, uh, nobody's going to tell you in your face uh, the reasons, the real reasons why they're leaving. So that's a, you know, sometimes it's almost pointless to do this, have this conversation because they don't want to offend you or they don't want to tell you why they're leaving correctly. So, but then you're just giving an opportunity saying, hey, please let me know if there's anything we can do, things like that. And it's a learning time so that uh, if, if they give us useful feedback, we can change, we can improve. So sometimes uh, people do give us feedback that uh, we can work on that tells us, you know, something is lack, they, they point out what is lacking and then uh, it helps us improve. Uh, but in most cases they won't, they won't tell us. So we'll have to try to find out, you know, where did we go wrong? Where could we have done better? Uh, what could we have done differently to keep them? So on, right? Uh, now, uh, just one one thing is sometimes there's a big change in the organization and we may have to let people go. Uh, not because they were bad, uh, not because they didn't have the skills, but because there's a change in what the organization is doing. So those things you have to handle very graciously. And in, in such situations, uh, instead of giving them one month notice period, I usually give them three month notice period. Uh, for instance, in uh, 2019, I think it was, uh, maybe um, somewhere there, some, you know, uh, we, we had TV programs going on, on God TV and so on. And then I felt, in fact, I told them maybe two years ahead, I said, hey, 
uh, at some point we will get off court TV because uh, there's a big move of people from watching traditional television to consuming content online. So two years in advance, I said, hey, at some point we're going to discontinue TV because our TV programs, because, uh, uh, you know, people are moving away from that, the main, main channel of uh, consuming digital content. So I should tell them. Uh, I was kind of trying to prepare them also for it. And, uh, and then, so two years in advance, I told them, you were going on and I was waiting to see, you know, when do we make this change? Because it's very expensive every month being on God television, God TV, on the TV channel, producing the programs, paying for the um, um, telecast time and all that. Uh, and then finally, we had a meeting with the trustees. Uh, I discussed it uh, with, with their advisory board also. I said, see, the time has come. People are, you know, using online channels and not people are moving away from television so they said yeah go ahead um we can end our contract with god tv so i had to make that difficult decision which is uh informing god tv that end of the year uh, they're going to stop but at the same time we had two very good people and they were very good people you know they had they were good in their work but we don't we didn't need them because we were going to stop uh, our TV programs. So uh, I told them three months, or maybe even more, three months in advance. I said, see, December, we are stopping. It's going to be a last program. Uh, three months, you have to find a job. I will help you find a job. You send me a resume. I'll give you contacts. You know, so I did what I could. So that's another, that's another scenario where uh, you have to let people go, not because they are bad, but because the there's a change in what is happening in the focus of the ministry. And so uh, in a very gracious way, to the best you can, you help them and you, you, you know, you have to release them. Right. So in a quick way, I've, uh, I've touched on various aspects of taking care of church staff and how you can, uh, uh, you know, take care of them, help them. And, uh, uh so some questions that I had noted from previous years, uh, people have asked, you know, what, what can you do to help could people grow in the organization, give them training, give them resources, give feedback. Um, in the past, somebody had asked, uh, how do you separate personal life of church staff and they work at church? So this is a very important uh, question um, that, um, you know, we don't, we try not to interfere outside of work hours uh, but at the same time a lot of things are happening on the weekends you know like services are happening conferences seminars are happening on the weekend so uh, weekends do get caught up in in uh, in uh, uh, ministry and so if they're working on the weekends and during the week we let them take the day off and on that day don't disturb them let them have time with their family um, but at the same time uh, I mentioned, you know, some scenarios where personal life can impact uh, uh, what happens in the church. And, it had, you know, a lot of these things have happened uh, sometimes even with our pastors. So, you know, one situation happened where um, one of our pastors, they're not pastors right now with us, but, um, you know, they got into a business financial thing with somebody in the church. And uh, then the, the, that whole situation went out of control and uh, it came to me and I had to sit down. Now, it was a very difficult situation because this was a personal dealing. It wasn't, it wasn't something church, it wasn't something church did or church, it wasn't church uh, involved. But that person who was also a pastor at that time with us uh, was doing some business or doing something on his own work. And he was involved, you know, financially with some person in the church, and uh, it just went sour. So it became a big problem, uh, you know. So that their personal life affected the church, and that had to be addressed. And so we made it a policy among our pastors not to be involved in any financial business dealings with anybody in the congregation, you know. 
uh, if if you are a church staff or you know don't get involved in financially in the Congo because it can affect uh, the church and so on. Now in that case, unfortunately, uh, both the family affected and finally even the pastor, their family, they both left church. But it was very difficult situation at that time to handle and uh, address and sort out. And uh, eventually things worked out like that. Um, so these are different situations where, uh, you know, keeping the personal life of the church staff or pastor and their work, you know, keeping it separate is it's, it's a challenge, but we have to try to, to do the best we can. Um, and how do we pastor our own church staff? Uh, you know, uh, so it's it's a little difficult because I, I'm also their boss and they're also uh, congregation members. So there are times I have to speak to them as uh, a boss or a leader. And then there are times I have to speak as a pastor to the same people. And so, you know, having to understand the difference is a, is, is a challenging thing. Um, so, but we try to do it. And then we also try to give them time, uh, you know, opportunities to grow spiritually while working, doing their work as well. All right, let me wrap up. Um, I've crossed my time limit. Um, so, uh, any questions so far? Any thoughts on church staff? Uh, from Pastor, ministry? Pastor yes. one question. Yes, so, uh, this is aligned with what we discussed today. So, uh, so you are running your own business, right? A new, a new creation IT business. Mm -hmm. uh, so there you are like, you are uh, a CEO. So now in APC, uh, you are heading as a senior pastor and the founder. So the question is, is there a leadership change the way you work with people? So, or uh, more or less uh, similar? It's like, you know, maybe you would have worked with uh, a full professionals on the ground in uh, new creation IT uh, business. Now here uh, it's mix and match, like you know, professional plus ministry and everything. So question is, is that a leadership change the way you work with uh, employees and ministers, Pastor? Mm. Oh, very interesting question. Um, so uh, I, I would say um, it's more of a addition. That means uh, I, I am still bring, I still do like you know what I used to do as a CEO. I still do that part uh, in, 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 from an organizational perspective. So, you know, uh, dealing with people from a professional perspective. Uh, so I still continue a lot of that. But then at the same time to bring in this ministry side of things. So that means to look at it more, not from, you know, how much money we're going to make out of the project uh, or, you know, we've got customers to satisfy. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, um, so I, I have to be a little bit more lenient, lenient here. Now, when we're doing the, you know, in the software company side, uh, it, it was very tight. You know, there's no tolerance for mistakes and, you know, and the, the, there's here, whereas in the church side, you're giving, I, I would say you're giving a lot more extra grace and you're being a little bit more empathetic and more compassionate, which on the professional side, you know, it's, you can be a lot more, firm when you're dealing with people. So uh, here in the church side, it's a lot more, okay, you know, try again, do this, change, you know. Yeah, I would say a lot more gracious uh, thing because on the in, in the professional side, the customer is not gracious, you know, they don't tolerate anything. If it's not done, it's not done, you know, money will not be, you won't be paid kind of thing. That is on the church side, it's a little bit more, uh, I would say tolerant, more gracious. So, um, um, uh, so, uh, so I try to blend the two to bring blend the professional, corporate style, uh, and learning, along with the more uh, empathetic, gracious, uh, Christian leadership uh, thing. Does that answer your question? I don't know. Yes, Pastor. Got it. Kind of trying to blend the two, yeah. Okay. Okay. There are any other questions? Uh, uh, Pastor, just uh, I have one more question here. Uh, I mean, since 
I mean, uh, you know, we mostly hire uh, church people, um, and there's uh, there's there's already a relationship that's been established since you know we have uh, hired people from church. Um, so, uh, but when you uh, deal certain things as boss, uh, there is a there is a personal hurt that kind of happens that could possibly happen, you know, in, in, in any organization, uh, you know, when they've already established a relationship and then they work as a staff and and when they deal with that person uh, as a boss, there is a, a personal hurt or, you know, that could happen. But how to deal in those situations at the beginning itself, uh, you know, mm. to let the people know uh, even before joining, uh, the church is church and work is work and we deal certain things in a certain way hmm. uh, because in corporate it, it it works a little, little differently it's hmm. work and personal is personal so you know just to just to hmm. uh, put yeah, so is, yeah very 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 good question because uh, uh, this is a you know it, it always happens right because um, from because there's a, there's a very personal connect, a personal relationship, and in you know, all of that, and then at the same time, uh, work has to be done. So I think uh, from the very beginning, uh, uh, there is when 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 we start, uh, we have to keep uh, work related things uh, at that level, mm -hmm. and uh, and if you find that uh, you know uh, people are trying to be casual about it. Oh, this is my pastor. <laughs> they try to say, hey, you know, okay, that is when you know when 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 we are having you know spiritual conversation or talking about the Bible or those kind of things. Yeah, we can talk like that. But when you're talking about work, this is how we want. And sometimes I've had to tell it directly to people. You know. Uh, most uh, what I have found is most people understand the difference, mm -hmm. uh, so they know the distinction between what is work and what is uh, a pastoral or a ministry related. Uh, you know, we are a fellowship. Uh, maybe let's use the word fellowship. Mm -hmm. they, they understand the difference between work and fellowship. I think, but some people may not. They want to mix the two and say, "Hey, no, 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 no. let's keep these separate," uh, because work we have to hold people accountable. We things have to be done. So we talk like that, you know, and uh, um, and uh, when somebody's coming for some, when the same person is coming to you for counseling for something personal, okay, mm -hmm. now we are doing it because of a fellowship or a pastoral role. Um, but if they're coming to you, if you need to be talking about the work, you just say, you know, right and wrong. Um, yes. Yeah, so my experience has been most people understand that difference. Uh, in some cases, uh, when I see that they are, they are not understanding the difference, then I have to tell them that uh, you know this is how we will work. Yeah. Uh, if you make it clear, then they also will learn. And yeah. because as a staff, as a as a as a colleague, also you know we could have that kind of a, a relationship problem because we are from the same church, and then you know. To come to a place where you work in an organization uh, and then when you share you know, certain things as a colleague uh, in a work related matter there is this personal uh, mm. thing happen so I just wanted to understand like how to deal with and yeah you know uh, in a more gracious way and stuff yeah thank you thank you pastor all right good 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 questions okay uh, we will wrap up today. Uh, next week, we will talk about uh, volunteer engagement and uh, maybe even, uh, so that's just one chapter. I don't think it will be very long. And uh, then we will talk about uh, communications, like how do you communicate uh, within the organization. Uh, volunteer engagement is very important because like uh, we saw, you know, the thing uh, about, we have about 300 some volunteers and many churches, uh, many Christian organizations uh, a lot of the workforce are actually volunteers. So we have staff, but a lot of volunteers. So then how do you manage them? How do you keep them motivated? All those things, uh, some practical things we'll talk about, uh, which will be useful. Okay, All right, let's close in prayer. Uh, I know we've taken almost 10 minutes extra. 
let's close and we will dismiss. Somebody could please close in prayer for us. Loving Heavenly Father, we just come into your presence, oh Father God. Thank you for this day. Thank you for today's class, oh Father God. I pray for all the um all the people, those who joined, oh Father God, also pray, pray for, for our pastor. And I pray for today's class, what we learned, of oh Father God, Jesus, and help us to cope up with all the challenges and other um difficult things in our ministry in our workplace of oh father god give us the uh, give us wisdom and knowledge of father god let us be faithful uh, in our designated works of father god jesus thank you for guiding and leading us in jesus name i pray this prayer of father god amen. Amen. amen all right thank you everyone thank you for being part you, of the class you, see you again have a good weekend thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank, thank you, you thank you everyone thank you